All right, all right. Welcome to Ecom 101, Lesson 2, where you get a crash course in all things e-commerce, from buying and selling to living an e-com life 24-7. We talk about it all. I'm your host, Joey. As with me always is my co-host, Robin. Class is in session. Let's get this party started. Yes, yes. All right. So, yes, Robin, yes. it's been a big week. It Episode has. Lesson 1 launched a couple days ago. <laughs> Got positive feedback from a bunch of different people. Yes. I'm amazing, amazing people. You guys are so amazeballs. We were so excited. I'm actually going to call some people out by name here because. Oh, do it. Do it. Do it. All right. So on our comments from our first episode, we got uh, Sue. She says, made it all the way to the end. It was great. She loves coffee talk. She's originally from Jersey, so she can relate. <laughs> nice. Um, some, more, uh, some more coffee for later. Yeah, <laughs> little, yeah. Definitely coffee. there. Talk. <laughs> uh, everybody remember the, the uh, what was it, the promo code or the, the fun code at the end, Black Rifle? Yes. So thank yes. you for thank you guys for watching that and getting to the end. Uh, Dorothy, uh, Uptown Bug, DuPage Picker, Junk Girl, Jane, everybody, thank you so much nice. for your support. It's oh my gosh, awesome. you guys rock! And Rosemary, yeah. thank you for bringing that up too. Same thing happens to me on mobile listings. I have to change my lowest offer settings. Awesome. I'm not alone on that. Nice. So it's been all happening right, well, to me all week, and it's been crazy trying to list. So it's been like, ugh. ooh. Well, Joey, take notes so that when we go to our eat up, you know, our eBay meetup, we can like chit chat with the yeah. the peeps. I have to show this. So this is our roll call section. Kind of try to stick with the uh, the class theme there. So this is our introductions and roll call, taking uh, attendance basically. So Robin, how have you been? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. The week has been amazing. Um, a little different because the holiday kind of throws you off a little bit in your eBay and your shipping, but personally, oh my gosh, had a maze ball time with my sister and her kids up in Reno. I got to check out a new coffee place. I got to yes. see some fireworks. I got to see the new fur baby. I got to catch up with all the kids and their stuff. And, um, yeah, just overall, it was really nice just to be present. Like I just kind of turned down the social media and just kind of focused on on the kids and my sister. So it was it was good. The kids, the sister, on our Instagram page. Is yeah. That, that's crazy. <laughs> Thank you for following. If you guys, uh, check us out on Instagram uh, at ecom one hundred and one podcast. Uh, yeah. Robin is at robin haas and I am at jr financial coach. Um, you also check us out on Facebook, uh, ecom one hundred and one podcast. YouTube, obviously you're there now, and iTunes, on yeah. iTunes podcast. So basically, the iTunes podcast is just an audio version of this. We're going to try to do some stuff down the line that's exclusive to iTunes, maybe some exclusive YouTube content, exclusive Instagram content. So you got to follow everywhere. But right now, just you know, sit back and have fun with us and as we learn the ropes. And I spent the last week learning YouTube analytics and how to make thumbnail photos and upload videos and Good oh, job, how to Joey. Submit feeds to <laughs> Apple Podcasts, RSS feeds. So I'm learning on the fly. So that's what I've been doing. Nice. Last week. Yeah, that's our Joey. He's oh our IT. God. He's our in-house IT guy. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun. It's stressful because yeah. I have a slow computer, but it's been fun. I know. Well, but. then that you just put on your check off lift. Like I yeah. am. Like our computers need to be updated. Our mics. You know, it, yeah. it'll ha it'll happen. It'll happen. You know, eventually I'll have a makeup artist back here patting me down. I'll, I'll, I'll have the lights corrected at some point. I somebody pointed that out too with the brightness. Look, oh I'll show you. Up. There. Oh, see, see but hey, lights? hey guys, he's got some really good lights. Hey, so technically but they're both on my left side because I know. my right well, side where my desk move. is, I have a TV there and I can't. Oh, I had it there earlier and it, all you saw was the light. So yeah, yeah, thinking. yeah. You need. He needs to get a ring light. He needs. To get, they've got the smaller size and then the eighteen inches. Yeah. What Jimmy and I have. So, I hear you. But I you try know, not listen. To mess up the shipping area or the photo area too much. I know. I hear you. Those are great yeah. photos, though. I mean, the great no, photo pretty lights. Good, yeah. I like them. Yeah. Bulky and clunky, but. Well, you know, hey, I'm sure when you first they started, work. it was a a way different scenario. So. Oh yeah, no, it was, just regular overhead light see yeah yeah so it's changing just in just in the what is it the year that you started yeah no it's been two two, two, and a half. two yeah but two it's funny because yeah. i go back and look at all of my old photos sometimes and i see the yellowing like light from the, i know 
overhead. I'm like, yeah, I really got to update those. Texts. That's why it's not selling. Isn't it crazy? I know. Like I, we do it all the time. Like, and you know, the thing is, <sighs> Joey, I don't even have over a thousand listings yet, though. I'm working on it, people, though. I'm working on it. Um, but when you go back to your, like your setup on the older photos, mm -hmm. you like are so bummed because you're like, oh, if I just only had the ring light and the right. white background, but cause you know, cause the way I look at this, okay, so I think on some of those photos, it's good to redo, but I also have a thing about going backwards. Like, I'm always about moving forward. Like, okay, well, those are old listings. Maybe put them on sale and then just keep moving forward. But mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later, too. Yeah. All right. So let's move into uh, successes for the week. Have any, mm. any good sales this week or any good? Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll tell you, I had a fail. Successes? Well, I did have, I, it turned into a success. So if you follow me on Instagram, I had posted like, I think a week and a half ago or a week ago that I sold the Mickey Mouse plastic Darth Vader helmet. Talked about it on our last episode. Yes. Right. Okay. So that person canceled hmm. after they paid. Interesting what? enough. I know. So not only did they send an offer I accepted then they pay and okay. then t less than 48 hours they decided no I don't I don't want it so either they found a better deal or they didn't have the money or they had buyer's remorse I you know whatever I don't care though I was a little teeny weeny little bit mad I was okay I said let's be professional let's keep it less personal I said okay so Jimmy's like Robin just cancel it Let's put it back up. So as soon as I canceled it, I put it back up. And I put it back to the original pricing, which was $89.99, then slashed at 20% off, which then put it at like $71 or $72, right? right? No more than, I think, less than 72 hours. It sold for full price, full price. And guess where it's going? It's going to LA to mm. someone who obviously is a Disney freak. And is gonna so love it, and she paid right away, which was amazeballs. So now it it went out. Um, she bought it on uh, the the nighttime of you know it's the eve of Fourth of July, so there was no shipping on Fourth of July. So I came back on Friday, shipped it out. You know, the good thing is I did it through pirate ship. And so when you have like, you're in a zone, I think it's zone five. I think maybe we're zone seven or five. I can't remember. I have to look on the thing. Mm -hmm. It was only like $7 to ship. So it was like, oh, I still made the money that I wanted originally. So it was a happy. So that was the success is that nice. though I failed, it came back and I got more money in the end. So fiscally, I was like, <laughs> Perfect. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Actually, I have, I have one to share this week too. Actually. Oh, good. Uh, remember last week we talked about the, the uh, cartoon glasses, the Warner Ooh, Brothers glasses. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what? And and I'm glad you brought that up because we failed to put glass. We forgot to verbally say because when you're in the podcast, you can't understand what you're talking about. All you know is Looney Tunes, but I forgot to say the glasses. So I'm glad you brought yes. that up. So yeah, so I showed one on camera last week. It wasn't that yes. specific one, but right after that, I got an offer on one from that lot. Oh, nice. Right. So the weird thing was, I had it listed for thirty-four ninety-nine. I got right. a. Let me try to find it here. Nothing like trying to do this real time. I know, right? It's okay. Thirty-four ninety-nine. I got an offer for twenty dollars. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, are you doing free shipping or no? No. Okay. I, I haven't okay. done no, free shipping in, in probably a year and a half now. Okay. Okay. So, so um, some of the higher items, I will. Like, if it's a really expensive right. item, I'll do free shipping because I feel like if it's more than a certain amount and I'm going to get a lot of profit on it, yeah, be a free shipping deal. Right. But Understand. I yeah. Got the offer. I did a counter offer of $27 right in the middle. I figured it's perfect. Nice. Yeah. About five minutes later, I hear the cha-ching on my phone and I look and it's $34.99 and oh. I go, Oh, did somebody snag it from this guy? Oh my God. No, <gasps> the guy went and bought it for full price. What? Yeah. I, I, I don't understand it. Oh, but who cares? I like, don't, I don't, I, I packed it and shipped it same day. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh. Fine well, with me. Yeah, congratulations yeah. on that. He could have had it for I, a lot less. I don't know why he just didn't take the offer. I, maybe he just didn't – maybe he was just afraid he was going to lose it. Like he maybe. just that, – that, Sometimes that happens. You notice that. You get a bit of counter offer and they come back and they buy it full. Right, because either they didn't get yeah. the, the notification that they got the offer or they just felt – I don't know. 
it would be kind of interesting to talk to that, yeah. that buyer though, to find out his thinking. Cause that's happened Felt to me. That I was there. Times. You're like, Oh, there's somebody on the other end. So yeah, I'll buy from them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, maybe. by the way. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show another glass. So maybe another one will purchase. Ooh, yeah. This. So this is bugs and, and Elmer. Elmer. So oh you don't gosh. have to buy this one, but buy another <laughs> one. Hurry up. Uh, you know you what I love a about those? Shirts to show too, so I know. <laughs> You're Robert Graham's. You're Robert Graham's. Yeah, Let me buy them. I'll, I'll give them away next week. <laughs> You want a Robert Graham starter kit for your store? No kidding. Jeez. No kidding. <laughs> well, good. Congratulations on your success. You get an A+. Plus. Yeah. I mean, this is how the cookie crumbles, man. I'm doing pretty good on Posh. A couple more sales. And we're oh, good. You're doing better than me, dude. I'm only, I've only sold one in the week of the uh, holiday week. It's, it's my wife doing that. She, I started doing it and putting stuff on, and she, the other day she goes, um, maybe you can help me out a little bit since Posh is my thing. And I was like, when did Posh become your thing? <laughs> okay. No right problem. off of Tina. Sure. He's team Posh. <laughs> so I just, oh, so I'll give a seller tip on that regard. If you're selling oh, yeah. on Poshmark, do it. Is great because Poshmark has their shipping included. You can get yes. shipping discounts. So if you're, if you're negotiating with somebody yeah. outside, uh, just regular offer back and forth. If you want to send somebody an offer that likes your item, you can give 10% at least 10% off the total price, but you have to give right. a shipping discount of either um, free shipping or 10% off shipping. So there's normal shipping prices like six ninety nine, and you could use any priority box you want or any envelope and it just goes priority. Nice. So you can either give a, a shipping price of four ninety nine or free shipping. Right. Right. So here's two little tips. Let me get real deep inside. <laughs> if you, if somebody likes your item, and you create a bundle for them of just the one item, you can offer them a, a whatever price you want without a shipping discount. Oh, good tip. Yeah. So you good can tip. give them, if you have a $30 shirt on there, you can give 20 for full shipping. You don't have to give a shipping discount on that. Nice. Hard to get, hard to get sales sometimes, but at least you can yeah. start the ball rolling and you can comment in your bundle without anybody seeing it on the main uh, posh listing page. So you can have oh, separate conversations that way. Yeah. Cause you know what? I have to figure that out. Cause I'm really, it's difficult for me to figure out how to like, if you know, someone likes something in your store, like twice, mm -hmm. like two different things. Right. Mm -hmm. And they tell you like to bundle that. I don't know how to like, I have to look at a YouTube video ah. to figure out how to bundle that. Cause it's like, we'll do a live demonstration. Yeah, we should. We should. Cause you know what? Seriously, yeah. I don't do enough on posh right. to really know the ins and outs. So that would be kind of fun to like get that platform down to because... maybe next episode. Ooh. Oh yeah. Yay. I'm all about it. Yeah. So I don't know. What do you guys so... think? We should yeah, do that. Let right? us know. Yeah. Do you, should we yeah, do yeah, a yeah. little brief, brief overview of how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. The other tip on that is because it's, um, everything is priority and it's a right. flat rate. My favorite box to use is the regional a box. Oh, me too, Joey. I'm all about it. It is nice and easy. It's nice and small. Right. It's like not that big. Right. Right. Shipping. And it's perfect too. Like if you are doing more than multiple, like you were doing multiple, like, clothing or mm -hmm. if you're in your case if you were selling two of your vintage black because you now did you know that you can put homewares on there now yeah I, I mean that which is really awesome because it yeah they really stepped yeah. up their game so I mean but there is a list as you as some of you know if you don't know you guys who want to join posh just make sure you go into posh and find out their list of what you can sell it's pretty it's not super big but it's there's a lot you can do yeah, which um, is great. The you know, regional A box is awesome because you can fit hats in there perfectly. Oh, for sure. In there, and everything gets fed, shipped fast, and customers mm -hmm. love it. And they, you know, they appreciate the uh, the fast shipping on things. Well, and things don't get crushed because you know, like me with my flat bills. I listen. If you get it in a flat rate, padded flat rate, it infuriates me. Because hats. I mean, I've had a couple times where my hats are fine, but then on that third one, my hat looks like a dad's bill and it's all, whoosh, or it's bent in half literally. Oh. And you can't repair that. It's just no. cardboard. So it's like. No. I always I ship hats know. in boxes. Yes. I, you're like me. I can't so. ship it in. I, I know some people do it. I'm not going to criticize anybody. That no, no, we're not criticizing. And then puts but, it in a polys and stuff. It's just, mm -hmm. again, one of my, one of my takeaways, and you'll hear this a lot is ship items how you want to receive them that's my shipping golden rule right. so how i want to receive an item is how i want to ship an item you know you don't want to get your stuff from amazon or stuff from ebay or stuff from you know best buy in the mail and it's just thrown in a right. box 
right. You spent money on it. It's your possession now. You feel like, man, they didn't really treat that right. So exactly. I, I, feel like I need to treat it that way. I want to re- open the box and see, like, man, this is the way I would have packed it. Perfect. Right. Right. And that's what you'll find on this show is that Joey and I will never, ever, ever talk about another seller because as Joey and I have said before is each person runs their business and their life completely different. Joey and I do different things. For example, a prime example that he just showed is he does not offer free shipping yet. I do. So we're just two different sellers bringing two different concepts to the table and we're not going to disperge on any other seller because they do something differently. But as a buyer, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I do appreciate when a seller understands that I really do love my flat bills. You yeah, know? Just put yourself into the right. mind of the buyer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jody, you couldn't have said it do. better. Absolutely. That's all, you do. all right. So let's move on to, that was roll call. So let's move on to midterm. Oh, okay. Gosh, you know, I'm really bad at midterms. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I just midterm, tell midterms you. coming up here. Okay. <laughs> the midterm, we're going to talk a little bit about e-com here. You got your e-com yeah, updates, yeah, yeah. e-com life. I think we kind of, did a little bit of the e-com updates. We talked a little bit about posh just now and some, some seller tips and stuff. Yeah. 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 Let's actually delve into a little bit of the e-com life part here where we talk about, we just had July 4th. Right. Just had independence day for America, United States. America. Yeah. America. American (laughs) independence. (laughs) Uh, so let's talk about seller independence and what that means. Oh yeah. Right? That's good. Yes. yes There's please. a couple of different types of independence. You could be financially independent, which right. I'm all about. Yes. You also be seller independent. So what you can post in the comments below, are you seller independent? And what I mean by that is, are you able to be a seller on your own? You don't have, you don't have another job that you need to take part time in order to make ends meet while you're selling. You are, a full-time on your own seller independent of everything else right and are you struggling with that or are you having a good time with that or do you need to grow your business more or are you looking to just kind of maintain where you're at so what we want to talk about a little bit is two aspects of that so what do you need to be seller independent and robin's going to talk a little bit about inventory and processes to you know, yeah get there and i'll talk a little bit after that about the Finances, finances. Yeah, the finances. <laughs> yeah, you'll find out we don't edit the show much, so that's in there too. The financials, and the financials. We're of, real, Joey. We're real. We're the, real. The financials of being seller independent. I'll give you some some quick math tips on how to figure out if you're yeah. ready to be independent. Oh yeah, right. We're not, and we'll go from there. So, Robin, yeah. seller independence. I am going to assume that you are an independent seller, independent person. Yes. What is your seller independent state? Do you know? Uh, I, you know what? I actually don't. It, to, I was part time. You know what I mean? Like I was part time because I was still on workers comp. See, this is how it all started, right? I think most sellers start because there's a need that arises. So I was still on workers comp and then figured, you know, I don't know if I want to go back to the medical industry um, what do I want to do? So I saw this show and basically in the show, they were talking about, you could take things out of your closet and sell them on eBay. So I thought, well, gosh, I have a lot of stuff. I'm going to try it. So that, that kind of got me hooked. That was the first you know, hook, line and sinker, right? I was like, Ooh, I made my first thousand dollars in less than a month. It was only after uh, a couple, a, a year and a half of doing part-time is when I realized, wow, I really need to step this up because I needed to, to, because I was thinking I needed to go back to work. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I wasn't making enough to, um, we I came from a two income. So, you know, married and two incomes down to one income, it really does change your lifestyle altogether, right? You have to yeah. budget. And when workers comp stops, which is by the way, as Joey will tell you, workers comp is never as much as like if you're working without, you know, like you're, you're not sick. Right. So that's when I realized I needed to do some soul searching and decided, you know, I need to hit this full time, very hard choice, but I didn't have a choice. Some of our people in our world, Joey have a choice, right? Because they're on the fence. They're like, okay, I could do this. I could do that. I don't know. I need Benny's whatever. So for me, let me just, cause that's Joey's kind of realm for me, I needed to make sure that I had a really good understanding of what was selling, like what, what to sell, 
right? Like the, the inventory that Joey was talking about. And uh, there was a lot of mistakes, like a lot. And I got to tell you, financially speaking, I took a huge hit, but then I kind of found my rhythm. And so then it was more of finding a niche. I, I say niche, but people say niche. I say niche. So I, right. So I started with something that I knew a lot about, which was medical industry clothing. So in the shoes. Mm -hmm. So I decided to stay within that realm in the beginning. And then when Jimmy boy stepped into it, because just like any other thing, the hunt is what I think most sellers really love, right? We love the searching and the hunting and the, Oh my gosh, I found the best deal. Mm -hmm. Jimmy is like he is the YouTube guy, man. Like he's on it. He's learning. He's learning brands. So he would make mental notes and actual physical notes on sportswear or not sportswear, sports coats and jackets. And here, and he's a golfer. So his passion um, is golf and fishing. So he already knew those brands. So he kind of just stayed in those niches. So I stayed with medical and crafting because I'm a scrapbooker. And then uh, Tiki, obviously, because I was already starting to go to Tiki, but I was on the back, the, the very beginning of Tiki. So I, there was a lot of lo learning there too. But, but anyway, so that's what we started doing. And then we realized we're having more successes than failures. Because in the beginning, it was more of just selling off our stuff out of the closet. So you kind of sell it for cheap because, you know, $15, $20. Like, I think the ROI then was probably average $17 to $20 right? $17 to 20. Now my ROI is up to close to 50 to 52. Mm. So, um, yeah, we've, we've changed. So when that started happening is when I realized, wow, I could do this full time. And if I had known Joey, then maybe I would have had a better formula and then I could have really got into it deep, but that's, you know, that's why you're here, right? You're all <laughs> learning. This is why class is in session. So for me, I would tell you for, to be independent as a seller is one, you really got to know something really well, know one or two things really well, and then start digging into them, but make sure that, that you're bread and butter. Don't, don't do like the hype, like Toys R Us used to do, which is now closed by the way, but they used to take something and then make it hype and then everybody would want it. It, it as Joey would tell you, fiscally, that's probably not the smartest thing to do because you'll have 40 Elmos that didn't sell and then you're going to have to sell them off, but you're still losing money because you paid full price or a supposed sale price. Um, so I would stick with your bread and butter stuff. So if you are a business guy and you have a passion of like, say, for example, golf, I would go with all those brands, like start, go to Savers, Goodwill, any of those places and start with those brands. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you, to really be independent is you got to do it like a nine to five. And I don't mean necessarily like the, you know, a true nine to five, but you certainly have to put the time in. You have to make it scheduled into your lifestyle because if you quit your job today and you are no longer checking in with the big man, when you're working for yourself, there is no one to check in with. Like there's like you get an accountability partner or get into a group where there's accountability. Like, you know, Robin, did you do 35 listings today? Did you cross post? You know, this is where Joey and I will come in to help you guys out. Um, and then if you have a partner, like he has Bettina and I have Jimmy boy, you know, we, we have to turn to them and say, uh, I didn't really pull in, you know, a thousand dollars this week. I don't know how we're going to pay that bill. That's not a comfortable conversation. So, you know, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I think there's, there's several things. I can't really do it all in one mm -hmm. episode, but I can give you the highlights. If you're part-time and you think you want to go full-time, don't quit your job. Do not quit your job until you listen to Joey's uh, couple steps to financial freedom in that sense. It really is important to listen to what Joey's going to say. And, it, and he's only going to give you, he's only going to touch a little bit on it, but I really want you to take notes so I'm prepping you now, get your piece of paper and a pen and write these down because it's important because even me sitting here, when we were prepping for the show before it started, it, there are things like, like, oh man, if I had known that, I would have had a formula. I, I mean, we're talking a basic formula, nothing really complicated, no calculus happening. 
just a simple formula. The next thing I would suggest is that if you're good at something, if you have a passion, so for example, are you good with animals? Are you, are you a, a golf player? Are you a fisherman? Do you like sports of any kind? Like you watch football religiously, basketball, whatever. If you're a mom, stay with the brands that you know now, right? So you obviously, as a mom, you would know Gerber and all those stick with those find those go to the store you're comfortable with those it's a little hard to sometimes step out of your comfort zone stay within your comfort zone until you feel like you have enough bandwidth to learn a couple more new brands and then later on down in a couple series i will show you how to find brands that are selling weekly this is what i do for my own business weekly what is selling in your categories that you look up so for example i'm going to give you a simple one if you look up under women's shirts they will tell you the first top 10 shirts that are selling for this week and this is why i really have a hard time with bolos because bolos for me change weekly and i sell a lot of hard goods so they change it it's up and down it flux flux mm -hmm. um also the next thing, you write stuff down. Do the old fashioned, like you're taking notes in class. Start writing things down. If you go to the store, you, even your grocery store as a mom, do you know Similac sells on eBay? Did you know that? I didn't know that. I just learned that from another friend. <laughs> that it's okay to sell overstock. So like if you bought a case of 10 and you only use two because now your baby's no longer on formula, they're on rice or something. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a mom. I don't really know. I'm kind of winging it here. But you have extra, there is an expiration date, but if you so you could sell those on eBay for a different price, because maybe that formula is no longer available, but the ex expiration doesn't end until 2021. I mean, the, the, the shelf life on these things sometimes is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, you know, there's just those things. I, I would stick with what you know. So if you're a mom with children at home and you have a part-time job and you want to get done with that part-time job and you want to be home more, I would suggest stick with your brands, take notes, and then within your bandwidth, like nap time or whatever, start going on YouTube, listen to Joey and I, and we'll start giving you brand names. I'm telling you, that's how I started. And now I'm full-time. I have a huge binder of labels and and things to look up and there, and every every day every day i'm not kidding every day there is a new brand that i learned i was just up in reno and i didn't even know this brand and my sister because she wanted to go thrifting or sourcing and she's like you know take my kids with it. like we want to go and help you they did so good <laughs> because they had brands that i had never heard of these and we're talking teenage kids and a mom who mm -hmm. It was amazing. So I found, she, she found this bag for me called Kavu. So K-A-V-U. It is a bag that uses climbing rope as the straps. It is so rad looking. I would have probably picked it up just because it looked cool, but I had no idea about the thing. Man, you look that up. It is a $150 brand new type of bag. Jeez. And I bought it for six bucks at a goodwill thanks to my sister so do you see like this is important to hear from joey and i he and i will constantly push this this for you we say this all the time learning is where it's at if you stop learning and you feel like you know everything and you do not take the time to learn something new daily you are like a shark not swimming you're gonna drown in this e-com world you really are so i'm just telling you Number one thing, notes, what you know, and then the tips that are going to come up from Joey financially, because I'm telling you these simple tips and it's not, and we're just hitting an iceberg on Joey's on mm -hmm. the financial, but, but enough to like give you a formula to see if it's even fiscally possible for you to do it, or at least give you a goal. So please do not quit your job yet until you have this kind of down i'm just saying and if you get fired then you need to literally step up the program because like you're going to need to figure this out pretty quickly otherwise get a part-time and then still do this on the side that's what i would do that's awesome so the recap here we have know your product your bread and butter mm -hmm. stay within your comfort zone right uh, time and schedule so have an accountability partner keep it right keep the schedule and don't quit your day job right away right absolutely yeah it was actually interesting you brought up um, uh, Jimmy getting involved with the golf and the other things. 
that's actually going to be a topic later on down the road, next couple episodes, people. So stay tuned is how to get your spouse involved. Right. In your business. Right. We have a Absolutely. lot of people on topics and, and oh, groups yeah. how it's, you know, a lot of, and I'll, not to sound like I'm a sexist here or anything, but it's a lot of female women who are starting the businesses and yes. having a hard time getting their husbands right. to get on board with their silly little hobby of buying stuff all day. Right. But Until I mean, they start seeing the results and they start seeing yes. the money and then the husband right. all of a sudden jump on board and are like, Oh, how can I help? Right. Because let's, let's be honest. Even if it was say, you know, uh, two women and, and you know, and one is working and one is staying home with the kids. Right. The fact is one partner is always going to worry about the fiscal, the finances yeah. always. It is how it is. And, uh, you're not sexist. And I know that personally, so don't even go there. The fact is it's true though. Right. I mean, I think men and women who are, let's say the breadwinner or the person who's in charge mostly mm -hmm. with the finances, it's an issue because you know, they, they see it as money going out to buy your inventory. They don't see the potential because if they don't understand it, they just see his money going out. Like, is yeah. she really going to take the time to put this on eBay? Like uh, I said, until they see the trip, like, Oh, we're going to Disneyland. How'd you pay for, oh, how did for you eBay pay sales? For that? Oh, yeah. I gotta get, I gotta get involved. So we'll have little tips on there and how to get your, your significant yes. other involved yes. and helping you without them really knowing they're helping you. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, totally agree because I, I think it's an important topic to talk about because it's, you know, it's also, let's be honest, we, we, our demographic is, is anywhere from 18 to like, say 45. Like I'm just calling it what it is. Even you kids who are in college, take it from us now, do it now. If you have a hustle of school, do a part-time hustle of selling on eBay, start making the money. Joey will tell you, put that money away and, in, and totally save it and invest it. Because by the time you're 35, Okay, I'm not 35, I'm 49. But the fact is, if I had done that, my life situation financially probably would look way different if I had had Joey, had a Joey in my life back then. Yeah. You all need a Joey in your life. <laughs> you do need a Joey and Robin. We're a good combo. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so let's jump in with you. Let's do, let's do the finances because everybody's really, I know – really about the finances so, so what 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 do you think joey like tell me like right so what i want to suggest to people or, or stress to people is basically 71 percent of businesses fail okay. within the first 10 years so think about that for a second 71 yeah, percent of your businesses okay. fail if you're an e-commerce business 65 percent fail in the first 18 months 90 wow. percent fail in the first five years Oof. Joey, so this is hard to do and maintain and keep you know keep it going so we want to make sure that when you decide that you're going to do this full-time that yeah. you actually are you know legitimately set up to do it full-time right now right. full-time for me selling on ebay also means you know i also coach Right. I work with sellers. I work with individuals. I also do side side things as well for extra income. One of my time is free, but I'm my own boss in every one of these things. Right. So that's what I mean by seller independence as well. Like I'm my own boss or, well, I would say I'm my own boss, but my wife's not here to tell me that she's the boss really. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get slapped later. I know that for a fact. But. Anyway, uh, she'll let me think I'm my own boss for a while. Yeah, well, it's good. It's good yeah. to give you a little bit of encouragement. And <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So going back to what you are saying earlier, this is part of not necessarily the finance part, but you were saying about learning and always learning and stuff. Yes. Do you remember the movie? I'm going to date myself. Do you remember Glenn Gary, Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross? Yes, yes. Do you remember the always be closing Right. Oh my gosh. That's so, yes. Always be learning. Right. I'm going to throw that out there. Pop culture for people. Always be learning. <laughs> so learn from everything. Learn. Yes. Inventory tips like Robin's teaching you learn where to find certain things, learn, to stay in your lane, but learn how to take some risk. And I'll talk about that shortly. Right. Because risk is that. important too. Right. I mean, just like in the financial world, Joey will clue you in too. But in the beginning, to get to the point where you're independent, Joey, mm -hmm. give them, give them your tips of like 
Yeah. Like, cause it blew me yeah. away when we were prepping the show. I was like, wow, dude, so my, if my, I know not. Yeah. So my suggestion for, for you is to take what you're currently earning. What's your take home pay? Right. And let's say you take $50,000 a year home and out of that 50, you have to pay all your mortgages, property taxes, food, clothing, transportation, shelter, debt, everything out of that. Right. So that's your, that's right. your, your living expenses. You probably work at a job where you get, they take taxes out for you, um, right. health benefits, 401k, other, you know, disability insurance, whatever. Right. Let's just say, for example, that out of that, and it's going to be kind of a high example, but I like working with just even numbers. It's not better. So let's say that that comes to about 25000 a year. Okay. okay so me, right now you're down. up to, so, all right, okay. so your take home pay is 50. All right your imagined benefit package is another 25,000. Okay. Got it. But right now you're up to 75,000 is your quote unquote salary. All right. So they're for the company to employ you, they're spending $75,000. They're putting okay. 25,000 on all this other stuff and they're giving you 50. Okay. What do you need then to sell in order to replicate that 75, not the 50, Right. This is where some people make a little bit of a mistake. They think, well, I'm making 50. I just need to replace that 50. They forget that they also have to replace their health insurance, their retirement package, their taxes being taken out because now you're right. a full-time seller. You have to take all your taxes out, your income. All this stuff was done for you before. Now you have to do it yourself. Right. right. So imagine that you probably have to do another 25000 in sales. So Essentially, whatever you're selling or whatever your um, take-home pay is, double that for sales. If you take home 35, figure you got to sell about 70. Right. Okay. Because by the time you take out PayPal fees, eBay fees, sourcing right. fees, store fees, shipping fees, and everything else out of that 100, you probably will get down to 75, give or take. Then from that 75, you take your taxes, you take your this, you take your that, you take your health insurance, da, 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 da. Right. Now you're left with 50. Now right. you start. So you're right back to like where you started. Yeah. Right. So you're saying, so basically you're seeing like two times the amount, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, See, that, that might like work for everybody. So what I'm suggesting. No, no, but, it, is, but I also think like yeah. it depends on, like, let's be honest. Like it, I think it depends on where you are in the United States, right? So like mm -hmm. you live in a very expensive area. You live in the Bay Area. <laughs> I live in Sacramento and the, the per capita is getting way up there. So if yeah. you lived in Tennessee, that's a whole nother story. So maybe your 100,000 is not necessarily somebody else. But I definitely think it's a good number to start with because yeah. you know what is i don't even know what the below poverty i mean 32,000 i know i something listen, like that, yeah, you, you want to be low. above that because and the other thing is now we have to all pay for our own insurance if we don't get insurance through our companies right. so and that's not cheap right and you let's don't want to be in the business of losing money no so you don't want to just replace your money and then realize you have all these right. other expenses and then you end up with less money than what you exactly. could have had staying at your job Right, because I think ultimately too, so this is just the beginning, you guys, these are just these beginning tips and I'm telling you take notes while you listen to the podcast or see the YouTube because eventually he's going to tell you, okay, so this is just to get you financially independent to start your own business, right? But then there's comes down the other part, which is down the road, but we, we want to talk about savings too eventually, right? Yeah, so and that'll we're not going to talk about that now, but you know. My, my ooh, yes. quick. Yes. See? Book that'll be out soon. <laughs> yes, you guys. He is right going to be a published author. Can you believe? I am finishing my editing right now, so keep keep you updated on that. But it's yes. all about financial planning. Ooh, I think you're going to have to business. give a giveaway too on that too. I'm oh, there'll be some giveaways for that. Nice. That should be out I, You shortly. need to give one to your partner. I'm just because oh, I yeah. need it. <laughs> yeah. So there actually will be a link in the description, and I'm I'm the worst at this, but there's going to be a link in the description to contact me right. through my coaching site. I'm going to give everybody a free consultation that contacts me. We can go over your stuff together. We can look at some of your, your numbers and then we can figure out if we need to have a longer sit down or we could actually delve deep into the numbers and figure right. out your specific number. Your number may be three. Your number may be 1.5. Yeah. Your number may be one. I mean, depending on where you are, right. where you are. And we can figure out what your seller and the we'll call it seller independence number. What's your seller yeah. independence number? That is a awesome hashtag. I'm writing that down right now, Joey. I'm writing that down. So because am I. I'm taking notes. It's class. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Okay, number. independence number. So write that down, everybody. Seller independence number. Find out what it is because mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to go full time. Maybe you just want to do a side hustle. And that's okay too. What if you're a college student and you have to be a full time student and you have to have a side hustle? Or you don't like your boss and you want to be your own boss, mm -hmm. then you really do need to figure out how much you need to make sure that your family, yourself, the dog, the car is all being taken care of. Yep. It's your four serious walls. stuff. Yes. It's all your four walls. You have your, your clothing, your transportation, your housing, right. utilities, food. Right. Because I'm telling you, we're all probably about a paycheck or two from being homeless. So don't let that happen. Robin, 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That's, I'm, dude, I, it absolutely, I see it every day with our friends who are resellers. Right. Even and some we don't of the get a paycheck. Dogs, That's right? the problem. 78% live paycheck to paycheck and we don't get a paycheck. Exactly. So where are we in that? Like I said, 90% fail in the first five years. Right. Which is like, it blows my, Joey, that number right there. I mean, you and I have only been selling for, okay, so I'm closer to three, you're two and a half. I'm two and a half. I got two and a half more years to fail. <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> Like, oh my God, Joe, we have to make this work. Like we have to, it, like, it's hard work people. And you guys know it. If you guys are resellers joining us, and even if you're not, even if you're not a reseller on the platforms, because Joey and I absolutely love eBay, but let's just say you're like Joey and myself and we have side hustles. Like I'm doing, this is why I was a little late to this show today was because I'm helping a guy trying to save his house and he's a tiki builder or a tiki uh, bar builder. So he builds out homes you know inside the homes to do whatever you know cool. like you know but why did he get in this situation you know what i mean like mm -hmm. so now i'm trying to show him the business side of it saying like okay listen you've got a talent and you need right. to do this this and this so this is it's not anybody can watch this show and and learn how to either get that extra money income in their world their life right. like even if you have a full-time job you still could do a side hustle like there should not be because joey's going to talk about this too if you don't have to take a loan and you could actually earn the cat right see joey's like don't do it it's the best way to go yeah definitely. i mean be. you're right because yeah dude because that's where we are we're debt free i don't even have a credit card man because I just don't want to go backwards. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm, trust me, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a credit card, but it's so easy for me as a reseller to take that credit card and go find inventory. Mm -hmm. Then I'm right back. I, I haven't had a credit card in years. Right. And I, I just need PayPal. Exactly. Get so I just need to train. I just want to train myself to do like, if I don't have the cash, like if I don't have the, the revenue, Mm -hmm. And it's not, it doesn't need to happen. Like it's not going to happen because I don't want to put Jim right. and I into debt. So I'm Why glad. Why should you this be buying more stuff if you can't sell the stuff right. you already have? And if you're not selling the stuff that you have now, then, then we need to show you the formula on how to look for what is selling in what category. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you need to blow that out. Like maybe you need to do a 50% sale or maybe you need to like, call somebody up who's a brand new seller and say, Hey, I got a reseller box for you that I'm going to sell to you for 25 bucks or maybe even take it, bag it up, mm -hmm. take it to savers and get that 20% coupon and then take your new list of information exactly. and go get some new inventory. But, but you know, yeah. What I wanted to add to for, um, to your inventory part of it, talking from a financial oh, yeah. side of it, um, when I sit down and I do people's retirement planning and I talk about where they want to go, I right. always talk, bring up risk uh, and risk aversion and how risk averse are you when you get into the market? Cause there's obviously different variables. There's, are you sure. high risk? Are you ultra conservative? Do you want to be in bonds? Do you want to be in single stocks? Do you want to be in, you know, mutual funds and more safe type things? Right. You take those same type of thought processes and apply it to your uh, eBay inventory. So right. you said your bread and butter, right? So right. I'm, so you, let's say you have your bread and butter is car parts or children's clothing, let's say. Right. And you don't know anything about anything else. I would suggest if you have, let's say you have your thousand listings or your hundred listings, dedicate a percentage anywhere from five to 10% of your listings to areas that you are unfamiliar with. Don't overflow your store with stuff that you don't know. Good Keep point. it small. Keep it right. small. So you have a diversification in your store, 
but you're insulated from if that area or that market tanks, right? You have insulation in your store, just like you would in the market. You wouldn't put right. all your all your money in a single stock. Right. That's too risky. It's too high risk. Oh yeah. So you diversify out into mutual funds because mutual funds are a, a collection of stocks. It's 200 stocks in one. So if one has a bad day, mm. your funds not necessarily having a bad day. And right. then you diversify your mutual funds over several areas. So then if one sector is having a bad day, you've insulated the other sector. So you can sort of, you build in this risk uh, cushion into your, into your. I love that. I love right? that. I love that, Joey. That's actually a really great piece of advice. Great piece of advice, even for somebody like me, because so basically we talked about bread and butter. So you're going to do three quarters bread, butter, and a quarter of, as Joey says. I wouldn't even go there for, that far, Robert. But, I'd go like 10%. Okay, 10%. But still, you're at least diversifying yeah. enough. And you might find that diversification. Oh, that's a big word for me. Hashtag. <laughs> that that might actually pay off for you. Mm -hmm. Then that actually might become your bread and butter. I, I love this so yeah. much, Joey, because this is where resellers get so caught up with the newest thing, right? And they just throw all their money into the what? The fidget spinners. <laughs> and then they're stuck. Yeah. I think I, I got to write that down. I have to write that down because I mean, we've got so many really good stuff going on here. Cause even for me, like this is really good because this makes it really easy for me to start listing. I'm going to look at like, I'm just, I mean, I, I diversify quite a bit, mm -hmm. but I might diversify a little less and kind of stay with my bread and butter since we're in the, as the, everybody says the slower months, just stick with my bread and butter, stay conservative, and then do my, you know, 10% of diversification that is like maybe new stuff for me mm -hmm. so that I can, I can say, I can save my money. Cause like I need, I need my money. Exactly. And I I, you know, if you're in a, if you're in a industry or you're in a market, like we have some people that come to meet up that sell car parts. Oh yeah. That's Ooh. all they sell. Yeah. They don't need to diversify. They could sell. Mm -hmm. And for them, diversifying might be motorcycle parts as opposed to car right. parts or some, or, or boat or, right. you know, some type of other engine part. But if right. you're, if you're set up where you're doing really well, Right. You don't really need to diversify. I mean, I'm not saying everybody needs to go out and buy. No, 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 no. Because we, you and I know. Here. Yeah. Just, if you're if you're looking for something else to right. sell, and you happen to be at Savers or Goodwill or Salvation Army or even a yard sale, and you're like, oh, wow, there's a Walkman here that I, I'll pick that up. And you don't never sell Walkmans before. That doesn't mean you sell one, go out and buy 50 of them, you know, right. go out and buy a couple more and put it in there, but don't, you know, your mark, your store does have to dominate with it slowly right. integrated into it because right. each product you bring in does bring in an inherent risk to it because the market could tank in that, in that oh. category. Everybody yes. starts this thing with bolos. You right. may be ahead of the curve on some of them and right. you start listing those things that aren't necessarily the hit Christmas toy yet, but you got it early. Christmas comes around and you're stuck with fingerlings for the next eight months. Right. Okay. Just two years ago, by the way. I know, I know, but, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I totally know what you're saying. I, I think it's a perfect way of slowly diversifying right. your store because it's back to what I was talking about before, which is stick with your bread and butter, like, or stick with your knowledge mm -hmm. that you know, right? So, like right. in Jimmy Boy's world, it's all about golf. Mm -hmm. And so he stayed with what he knew. And then there's a me with like, well, now it's, you know, quite a bit, but back then it was all the medical industry, um, you know, labels and stuff. So I, I think that's great. Like this is the beginning. These are just the beginnings. Yeah. Like, and we'll get I, deeper into these topics as we go. Absolutely. On but I want to recap because the biggest recap that I love, cause I learned, so I just learned so big today is that let's use the, the math problem of 50,000 is what you're making at your, whatever your current job is. And 20,000 is all the bennies that your company is investing in you. So that gives you like, what is that? 70? About 25,000. 25,000. Yep. So that puts you at your number at $75,000. That's a lot, dude. 70,000, 75,000. Mm -hmm. Then he was saying, so if you were thinking of going full time, you need to go two times that amount two times because now you lose the investment that your company's made into you. Like that 25 is immediately taken. Like you're, you don't, that's out. Like you have to pay that now. They, they did that, but now you have to pay it. And then by the time you got done with all the shipping, the PayPal fees and all of your other 
little numbers that keep taking away, you're back down to 50 grand. So, yeah. I mean, so if you want to make more than 50 grand, you obviously know the formula. I mean, it's simple. This is just a very simple math. Joey's just showed you in very simple math, like the re, what is that? The reseller independence number. Yeah. Your seller independence number. Like, dude, we are going to hashtag the crap out of that. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized it spells sin. Oh. Seller independence number. So what's your sin? What is your C? I don't know. <laughs> it's number two. Yeah. No, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, so exactly. So your seller dependence number, it's going to vary from person to person. Just start off with a basic number in your head of two and work for that goal of two. Yes. Two times your current take home pay from your job. Right. And the other takeaway is you better know your seller independence number, regardless of what business or side hustle you're in. Right. You got to know it because right. if you don't, if you're the kind of person who doesn't do, like, I get it. Like some of us are not always about the numbers. We, you and I personally know someone who totally is about the numbers, right? I mean, she is spreadsheet city. I get it. But with these simple steps that Joey's going to teach you along the way, like this, this will not be an uncomfortable thing. Like, I think that this and you know, you have e-com life and then you have e-com finance. They will come together and you will see like, Oh, oh, well, that's not so bad. I got this. I got this. Because 90% of us fail in five years. Yeah. Holy moly. I don't want to fail. Do you want to fail? I know you no. people don't want to fail. I know Joey doesn't want to fail. No, because if I failed, everybody else fails. Right. We can't fail because we have to be here to talk to people. Wait, I, right. Joey, we have a lot of pressure now. That's a lot of I pressure. <laughs> After that heavy, heavy talk. It's yeah, time. but that was still cool, though. I loved it's it. It's time for recess. Yay! I'm all uh, about recess. <laughs> so recess today is our coffee talk. It's coffee talk. It happens to be one of our most popular segments <laughs> mm -hmm. already. I know. So, I love it. I love it. But you know I, why? Because yeah. coffee is like Coffee's reseller. Coffee. But it's the nectar of the gods for us resellers. Yeah. It so really I is. am drinking two, two coffees today. Nice. I have a hot coffee and a cold coffee. Today. Cold coffee I didn't finish from earlier because I, I drink coffee all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have from a local place here in Oakland. They're all over the place. It looks like they're in LA. Oh, nice. Um, a lot down south, actually. It's called, and my Spanish is horrible. So, so Tierra Mia. Yeah, Tierra Mia. So, yeah. like, I don't wonder what that means. Let me look it up on the thing. Like, something yeah, look, Mia. Look like, it uh, up. Uh, I am. I'm going to do Craft too. Coffee Roaster. Ooh. With a strict focus on quality and unique Latin-inspired menu. Oh, nice! So what I what, what I'm drinking is actually called the rice and beans. The coffee. rice and beans coffee? Yes, it is horchata flavored, <gasps> which is amazing by itself. Right. With mocha, it's a frappy, and they ground coffee beans in it. Okay, that's just rad. Yeah. So, rad. you know, like Starbucks has their Java chips. So they, they ground Java chips in it. This one grinds coffee beans in it. Ooh. So you God. get that coffee bean Jimmy taste. Jimmy Boy would love that. Uh, so it's rice and beans, which is funny because if you cool. watch or listen to um, Dave Ramsey at all, I do. and I'm a big Dave Ramsey guy, I'm a Ramsey coach and everything else, you learn a little bit about me on that part. Nice. But um, his thing when you're getting out of debt and you – go on a bare budget is be on beans and rice, rice and beans. That's the <laughs> cheapest thing to afford. You get them in Absolutely. bulk, you eat them and you save it's money. It's good on food. for you. Right. A lot of protein and fiber and stuff like that. So when I see yeah. the rice and beans on it, I'm always like, it's in my coffee budget because I have some, you know, rice and beans in my budget. <laughs> okay. Wait. So is it spelled T I E R R A? T I E R R A. Okay. Yeah. So on the Google translator from Spanish to English, it means my land. Ah, my land. So I basically, like they're just bringing it back down to their mm. to the basics. So I got that. Nice. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without our Black Rifle of the Day. Out of my... Oh, absolutely. Because again, we just want to say... Like, Christmas like. cup. <laughs> we have our Black Rifle of the Day. It is the limited edition Texas Roast Freedom Fuel. Oh, nice. Oh, I like the, the logo on that. That's kind of yes. cool. It's a pretty cool logo. Yeah. 
Oh, it's limited edition too. That's what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a dark roast. And yeah, it's been. I love it. It's been awesome. Yeah. Okay. So now did you do, do you brew this hot? Is that like, so you have a hot. Yeah. And a so I usually have these hot. Gotcha. The black rifle. Now, do you put anything in it? Like, do you put a little bit of, you know, creamer? Do you put a little. Yeah. So I, I went to Target the other day and got these. It's called True Moo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's like chocolate milk. And I love chocolate milk, by the way. Right, right. So it was a um, dark chocolate salted caramel Ooh. milk thingy, right? Oh so I gosh. said, I'm going to put that in the coffee as a creamer. Cause it's real thicker. Right. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I've been throwing. Oh, in. then you wouldn't need sweetener either. Right. You would no. just throw a little bit of that. Oh yeah. yeah you're throw you're that in. in with the coffee. And it's yeah. Uh, oh, you're getting some chocolate here, here, here. in there. Okay. Well, since we're having coffee talk, uh, I went up to Reno, right. For uh, independence day, 4th of July, hanging out with my kid sister. And she's a coffee drinker too, just like me and Joey, actually everybody in our, in our realm, Joey or coffee drinkers. I'm just saying. Good. Anyway, I found this new place. So the kids went to, well, first of all, let me back up. The kids wanted to go do ice cream after we did some fun stuff. But it was really warm in Reno, which surprised me because it's a mountain town, but it was like almost 90 degrees. It was crazy wow. hot. Yeah. So they went to a place, they wanted to take Auntie Robin to this place called Rolled. And if you follow me on Instagram, I showed you the videos, you know, like it was really cool. They flatten out the ice cream and then they take a, like take a spatula or, or a, a thing that you do the drywall with or whatever. And they make these little rolls. Seriously, I'll have to show you rolls of ice cream amazing. Well, right next door to it. So I, so I was in line with the kids and I was like, Ooh, and on about this ice cream. And the guy came in with this, this coffee. And it smelled heavenly. <laughs> and I turned to him and I said, excuse me, sir, where did you get that coffee? And he goes, oh, right next door. It's a roast. You know, they roast their own coffee. And I was like, oh, mm. I'm so over there. So we got the kids situated. And then I took my sister over there and we went to a place called, it's called Hub Coffee Roasters. So they have their own roasting vessels inside. The place smells like heaven should be. I'm just saying. It was amazing. They do samples. Like, so they have dark and the medium and they have a light roast. They have a decaf. Um, so I picked up a bag because it was so good. Um, I had a, a, an iced coffee that day. And so you know me, anybody knows me, when I'm having a coffee and it's a brand new coffee, I'm going to do simple. I'm going to just do the coffee with a little bit of cream and a little bit of uh, stevia just so I get the full taste. So today... I'm having my coffee nice. with a little bit of cream, no chocolate milk, but you know, cream and my, <laughs> my stevia. But I did add a little bit of something, something in there. Um, I added a uh, real vanilla. Oh. So I just, you know, it's like a, it's a liquid and it's, you get it from Trader Joe's and I just did. One? Yeah, uh, no, it's a, it's a little sweeter than the, sorry, my headphone just fell off. It's a little sweeter than the baking one. Okay. Um, and it's, I, you know, to be honest, the Trader Joe's, I don't know if it's Italian or if it's, but it's got this really good, rich, like it's yummy. It's really nice. yummy. So I put about like anywhere from three to five little quick drops in it mm -hmm. just to kind of give it a little, give it a little something, something. And, um, nice. that's, that's my coffee for the night. And I'm telling you, Joey and I drink big cups of coffee and i gotta tell you it doesn't affect me like some like i my mom cannot drink coffee after four o'clock because she's up all night and my sister too oh so jimmy and i our house it smells like a roast roaster because we have coffee all day long you joey knows this we go to ebay meetup jimmy comes in double fisting it <laughs> i come in with my big old 32 ounce oh and just <laughs> a side <laughs> note i know right a side note, I just learned that Dutch Brothers came out with a 38 ounce, I think. Oh I think God. it's a 30. Yes, it's like a thermos. So you can actually go there, order your iced coffee, and they will put it in your thermos, which is Dutch Brother. Oh my, I was like, Brothers yes. Is good. Oh my God, dude, Dutch Brothers. Is we don't have any down here by yeah. us, but they're good. Oh my gosh. Well, see, I don't have a saver, so we'll have to meet halfway because I'll bring yeah. you a Dutch from Dixon and we'll meet at Savers. <laughs> they just put one in in Vacaville recently. Oh, did they? Oh, yeah. Well, so we go to Savers. We'll go there. Mm -hmm. Get some coffee to fuel. I'll be like, yeah, Joey, coffee for jump me in, doesn't really see. do much. Like, I never feel like, oh, it's going to keep me up or put me to no. sleep sometimes. But then it's like three in the morning and I'm like, oh, I guess it was the coffee. <laughs> but Patina, she 
ca- caffeine has the opposite effect. Like she will pound Red Bulls and Monsters all day and coffee at night, and she's out. She's out. Isn't yeah, that stuff has the opposite effect. You ever see those? Um, we get a little off track, but it's fine. You ever see those? Um, it's recess. DNA. <laughs> I know those things on the TV where they do the DNA test, like oh, yeah. ancestry yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and you yeah, could yeah. actually find out on some specific things. You're like caffeine intake levels and oh your level to like you know your protein and you know whatever yeah. so I'm, like, I'm gonna get that for her and see what her caffeine intake was <laughs> off the charts because she just hey mad. i think if you were to like you know do a bloodletting on me or something i'm sure it would come out dark, dark. roast or something oh dark. yeah <laughs> because i'm telling you i literally Ugh. i love it. and i and i have to tell you i'm not a hot coffee drinker yeah but if it's cold enough, I'll drink a hot coffee. But but it's mostly no, I, ice. I'm I'm not a hot coffee person either. In the dead of winter, it's iced coffee or yeah, or it's I and ice I make my own or something. Yeah, yeah, I brew like a whole twelve cup and I pour it. And once it cools down, I pour it into my mm-hmm. my holder in the for the refrigerator. And I'm it. I'm in like Flint. Oh, dude, I yeah, dude, coffee. If I don't know what to do it. without coffee, recess like it's coffee recess. It's like together. <laughs> Uh, all yeah. right so with that let's move on to our final exam yeah yeah oh my god oh, the finals don't, don't worry if you didn't study it's fine yeah it's yeah <laughs> so we start off with a little financial tip like i said earlier um know your seller independence number i right, just try to figure out what that is it's going to be different for everybody else and that number will change as your time goes on as you get different um different things in life that you have to pay for. Let's say right now you're renting and you want to buy a house or you want right. to buy a second house for rental property later on, or you start having kids or you have to worry about college. Mm-hmm. Your, your income is going to be need to go up and change to reflect that. So your seller right. independence number is going to have to change as well. That's a great it's point. not a, it's not a comparison number. So if I'm two and you're one and a half, that doesn't mean that I'm worse off than you right? at all. It's just for you specifically, to know what you you need to do because a lot of people when they get into the business like we said last week and a little bit this week they kind of fall into it right right and so they're not good with numbers you're not good with accounting or anything like that if you just know some basic stuff like like that number you'll set yourself up oh or more for success than, than oh yeah more. and i don't think it's ever too late to know your self no. independence number because nope. uh I'm all about it, Joey. That was the best tip of the night, seriously, yep. because I think it's important. And as you said, it will change not only with your life situations, but also age situations. Because like, for example, we know people who have actually retired from work and now want to have a second income, right? So they're getting their retirement, mm-hmm. but now they want to, you know, dabble in a little, like they want vacation money or something. Well, that's so, the yeah. thing too. You know, when you figure and I get a little off track, but I'll bring this up in another episode with retirement. Yeah. Typically it's suggested that you live off of about 70% of your pre-retirement income. But if you in certain areas need to live still off of a hundred percent of your retirement income mm-hmm. or pre-retirement income, you need to make that up with oh yeah selling or other aspects. If your selling part is only going to, you know, replace that 70, you know, you have to think about like, we have to replace the full amount because I right. still need to live on, a lot right. more based on our oh, situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For so, sure. For sure. Again, those are things that I can talk to people about personally if you want to right. just reach out. You don't have to put in the comments. That's kind of a private thing. Just reach out to oh, me yeah. and we'll talk. And yeah, don't put your your all your financial business out there. But, you know, yeah. you listen, you you can go to Ecom 101 podcast on IG. You can send a message. Joey and I both see it. Yep. You can also go to his personal IG, which is JR Financial. You, I mean, seriously. And Everything will be in the links. And I'll put a special link in there too yeah. for my scheduling if you want to schedule a 15-minute free call with me or even just yeah. a free one-on-one web, webcam like we're doing now for our show. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely. About it. I work with and we won't – and so. he's – he's not about sharing all that. It, this is really, honestly, this show is really just to give you some kind of course direction, give you a lesson plan, and hopefully it will guide you to have a better e-com lifestyle. Cause this yeah. is what it really comes down to. Cause Joy and I have listened to so many people over the many months that we've been doing eBay meetups and just in, you know, and outside of that, I, 
we know so many people who don't have retirement. We have so many people who don't know where to, to, how do we save money? How do we do, how do we do 401? How do we do, mm-hmm. you know, portfolio? What's a Santa what account? Like, do I, I mean, like, need? yeah, like what do I write off? And, mm-hmm. you know, and then in my case, it's more about where do I find inventory and how do I get started and how do I do this? And how do I, if I fail at something, how do I come back from it? Because again, the yeah. numbers are pretty astounding here on my notes. 90% of us seasoned sellers fail by year number five. Like I, that blows my mind, but it also totally is kind of that moment where you say like someone says, no, you can't do it. I'm kind of now actually more jazzed to like prove to myself and some other people that, Oh, I'm, I'm going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I just think if you guys just keep following this journey, I think you'll learn along the way. Cause you know, cause Joey and I are all about learning. And just remember too, what we're trying to do here is not so much show you the how, yeah, I mean, how to sell. We're going to give you some tips and stuff, but not specifically like we're not going to be so focused on this is how you wrap, this is how you right. list, this is how you do things. We're going to be more focused on the why. Why do you sell? What is your why? And maze balls. Once you figure out what your why is, we'll help you get there. Yeah. I mean, like, like seriously, I got to ask you guys, (laughs) like, yeah, like, do you know the why? Like, do you know the why on a lot of things in your life? Because I bet if you take notes and you really are transparent with yourself, I'm wondering if the why is really like, oh, I want to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. We all do. Then we'll show you the how. Right. You know? But is it the why though? Like, no. yeah. I, you know, because again, the reseller game, you have to better have like some really good whys because if not, it's just, it's just a passing fancy. It's a, it's, what do we call those? It's a hobby. Yeah. It's a flash hobby. in the pan, a dust in the wind. Right. Uh, what is that? A uh, one night? Oh no, wait. That's right. It's wrong, wrong show. I meant like a, you know, when they do one song, oh, I went, I went a whole uh, encore. Encore. <laughs> like, one hit one, wonder. One hit wonder. Oh, Robin's, Woo, Robin's was... previewing our Ecom After Dark episode. Yeah. Up later on. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, already off the rails. Okay, man, like... oh, <laughs> so yeah, comment below. Um, what is your why? Let us know what your yeah, why is. Yeah, like it's, hashtag. I think it's, what is your why? Right. I mean, for me, for me, it is to be financially free and to help my partner in life because I want us to travel together because no one's life, no one's life is guaranteed. And I want to live every day the best I can. And I don't want to leave him in debt. And I don't want to leave, you know, without having some kind of financial stability for him because Mm -hmm. we're partners. So I want to make sure that he's good to go. That is my why. Jimmy boy is my why on why I work so hard in this business. Plus the fact that I love it. I, I don't know. I love the fact that I'm my own boss. Yeah. I love it. That's my why I've been, I've been my own boss since I was 18. That's awesome. Actually, no, I I take that back. 19. That's awesome. I I worked someplace when I was 18 and I realized I didn't want to work for anybody anymore. See, there you go. That was your motivator to get to the point where you are now. I love that. I'll tell a quick story. When I was in college, I worked at McDonald's. Yeah. Okay. I worked at McDonald's that's for like a, a week, normal for a one week. week. <laughs> Joey, is that the sixty-five percent of failure? No, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> I worked at McDonald's and I worked the first week, and they're like, "Oh, you're doing so well. We're going to put you in the management training program." Blah blah oh, blah blah blah. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Great. Sounds good. I don't want to work here my whole life. That's not a problem. I'm in school, so fine. I need the money. Yeah. Schedule comes out. I look at the schedule on the wall and I'm off Monday and Tuesday next week. Perfect. So Monday I'm home. I get a call from the manager at the store. Hey, why aren't you here? I go, I'm not scheduled to work. Oh, your name is on the schedule. I said, no, it's not. I have a, I have a copy. I have a copy of it. I'm not on the schedule. She goes, yes, your name is on the schedule. It says it right here. John, you're supposposed to work. I said, my name's not John. It's Joey. Oh, she goes, oh I thought your name was John and you're supposed to work. Can you come and work? I said, you don't even know my name, so don't expect me to come back. And the next day, I went and turned my stuff in. <laughs> that was just me. I said, I, I, I can't work for somebody that doesn't know, one, doesn't respect me enough to know my name, and then, you know, treats me like that. I, I can't you. do it. I can't do it. I so at that point forward, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, 
I got to work for me. I got to make this work. Nice. So I've just been doing odds and stuff since then, you know? Nice. And so you working. still graduated with a what? What? Yeah. MBA. MBA. Yeah. So. I'm not trying to show them all off on the wall behind me there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd show it off all day long. Just saying. Uh, I'll be the one to be the brag, the brag, hashtag bragging on Joey. <laughs> Yeah, but it just shows, it just shows though that your why was enough motivation to get you to the point where you knew where you wanted to be. And look yeah. at you, you're almost a what published author. You graduated with an MBA, you're now doing financial coaching for your clients. Dude, seriously? Yeah, I mean, I mean and also you, I think your why changes over time. So oh my was, god, yes. Why I wanted to be my own boss, right? Yes. And why I want to be a coach and why I'm working with that is something it's a completely different why. Yes. Yes, and my because, why, yeah, completely different why I do coaching because right. of what happened to me personally and the debt we were in and how we felt and everything we went through. Right, and we got out, but it was sort of my why was I don't want anybody to go through what I went through and feel alone like we felt alone. Right, because I think when that was happening to you, you didn't really have anybody who could break it down to simple terms. You know no. what I mean? Because like, let's be honest, like I, I love David Rams. Like, dude, I listened to his, oh my gosh, Ted, Talk, I love them all. But if you're not really like focused on what they're saying and taking really diligent notes, sometimes it gets a little like, what is happening? Like, what mm -hmm. is he saying? You know what I mean? So I think, right. I think you took, you took all of that Mm -hmm. And just made it down to, I don't want to say simple, nothing about finances is simple, but you made it so terms that people could understand. So, right. and apply, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it also goes back to what you're saying earlier with your inventory thing is the accountability partner. Oh, absolutely. I work with so many clients that are single yeah. men, single women that don't right. have a significant other and they need that accountability partner. Absolutely. So you need accountability partner in their finances. Absolutely. You need accountability partner in your business, which is why I, I stress in, you know, throughout the book that I'm, I'm finishing and throughout the podcast when I'm on eBay all the time, it's about having your, what I call the council of elders. Right? <sighs> so having people around you in your business that one, know things that you don't know that are willing right. to teach you some of those things. Right. And just having those people around that you can bounce ideas off of. So you're, right. let's say you're the idea person, Robin, you know what you want to sell, right? Right. You know business, you know, your, you know, your product and everything else. But let's just say, for example, and I'll break it down simple. You don't know your taxes. You don't know your bookkeeping. You don't know your investments. You don't know your insurance. And you don't know your financial, you know, your whole overall financial plan. Or marketing oh my gosh, plan, that's right? like every, that's almost every reseller right? I know. Yes. So instead of trying to do it all yourself and wear all these different hats, because if you try to put on a hat for marketing or you put on your accounting hat, you're going right. to, something's going to give in one of those other areas. Absolutely. So you bring people in your business on a contractual basis or on a friendship basis if you know people that you can bounce these people off of and that's your council of elders you find an insurance guy you find an investment mm -hmm. guy you find a tax person a cpa and you find a financial planner or, or somebody like myself that kind of runs it all for you right and right. you bounce it off me and i kind of relay the that's basically what a financial coach will do or a financial planner should do is sort of like be the quarterback of the team you're yeah. the head coach you call on the play of what you want to do and here i am i go to the huddle I tell everybody what to do and we progress down the field. Right. 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 So that's what you should be having in your business. So you don't go at it alone. And remember last episode, I talked about the guy who opened the coffee shop vocally and was out of business in six months. Well, he didn't have anybody around him to sort of say, Hey, that's, you don't need to spend $65,000 right. on an espresso machine when you can buy one for four grand right. or less. You don't need a yeah. hundred thousand dollar countertop of granite when you can just get tile. You know, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. He had nobody to bounce that off of. So he, his accountability partners weren't there right. and he got in deep and out. So well, and find I think, accountability partners yes. also have um, skills that you don't have that you can kind of mooch off of per se. Well, yeah. I mean, like, well, it's, it's going to be a good bartering. So like, this is why I think we make a great team, right? Mm -hmm. You and I become accountable partners to each other, but also to the viewers that we have and the listeners. Like we will make sure that we're not giving bunk information and information that is, first of all, there's like, there's so many ways to do business, right? Mm -hmm. Seriously. But there always is the common core, which is you've got to still know your business. Like you've got to know it. And the number one thing is you got to know your numbers. You got to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then you're going to be the 90% 
who fail at the end. And I don't want that for any of our viewers or listeners. No. So I would say stick with us, subscribe down below, listen to iPods. Like, listen, if you can't see us in video, like I get it. You guys are driving the kids to soccer or whatever. Do the podcast because Joey and I are yeah. podcast hounds dude like i got a face for radio as they say I, so well just listen, i you know i'm better. hoping I'm, I'm i hope i have more than that but i get you i hear you like sometimes you just don't have time uh, to watch again if people don't want to see the big bright white light on the left side of the plastic <laughs> then listen it's fine to listen that one I, on both. I think, subscribe I think to both. It's fine because we're going to have exclusive content eventually on both areas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure subscribe and then, on iTunes and, and here. Yes. Do it all. Subscribe yeah. all the way across because, yeah. and I'm here to help you make sure that you know the business, like the, not just the finance, Joey, that's me too. Like I'll learn that along the way, but it's more about the inventory because, you know, I'm going to help Joey start listing his stuff too, because it's important and yeah. when to let things go like you don't have to list all your stuff like you if you have a storage unit of stuff you, you, you know some of that stuff is no longer you can't you just have to let that go right that's you're gonna have to lose some of that inventory and you're gonna lose a little bit of money and that's okay because you can fail a little bit because the next time around it's you're gonna be that much you know you're gonna have that much more knowledge after following the journey and um just taking the notes in class. Like I'm telling you, it really comes down to taking the simple notes from each class lesson and compiling them. And I think you will find that it's really, there, there's probably going to be like, you know, top 20 tips yeah. just to get you started because Joey's right. I personally, if I had to start my business over again, I probably wouldn't have started without knowing my seller independence number because I would want to have a better no, like I would want to have a better knowledge of like what I need to do to earn it. But, but since I threw in the, you know, I just jumped into the fire, I had a lot of failures, you know what I mean? But I kept going and kept going and I, I, you know, talked to the right people. And in my world, I have a, I have people who do vintage well, who do hard goods well, who do clothing well, and then certain platforms well. So I do have my circle of elders, and now I have Joey in my world to do finances so he can get on my butt about trying to get a savings, a retirement, you know, all that. Uh, I do have some retirement. I'm, I'm not totally nil and void, but at the point of all that is mm -hmm. that just together, I think we're going to make a really great team because we're, we're just super smart in certain areas. And I'm just, I really want to make sure that people understand that there is no right or wrong. And this is not about opinions. Joey and I are right. It, we're not here to disperse anybody. Like we're not those people. And we always want you to learn, learn, learn. And we are willing yeah. to learn. So if you drop us something and I'm it's taking notes, right? Exactly. Robin's I love talking, Joey's I'm taking like, notes. So even I'm taking notes. See? Robert, I'm going to get you a horn. So Ooh. whenever you, whenever you toot your own horn, you could just. <laughs> it, <'cause> it's, <laughs> I don't uh, do it very well. Uh. I get really embarrassed because it's like, I really, I, you know, and I always hear from people like Robin, if you're, if you know something, you should be proud of it and you should shout it out from the, the rooftops. Mm -hmm. But I really do have a hard time because I always feel like I'm always learning. So it's like, yeah. I don't ever want to be the master of all because I really like the idea of, well, I don't know it all. So I'm okay with like, oh really? I didn't know that brand. Huh, that's interesting. Or, hey, I didn't know that glitch existed because I didn't mm -hmm. do it that way or whatever, but I don't mind. It's always good to have your knowledge. I was always taught when I was going through training or, or school whatever because it's like you learn all the different aspects you learn insurance you learn uh investing you learn retirement estate planning sure. you learn all this stuff right yeah and sometimes people pick up certain topics a lot better than others Absolutely. i was always sort of like in the middle on things so it kind of worries me a little bit like oh i don't really know everything about retirement i don't really know everything about estate planning but i know enough of each topic right right so the the phrase that one of my professors taught me he said it's, it's okay to be have your knowledge be an inch deep and a mile wide Oh, I love that. That's and me, so Joey. That's, that's what me. we have to, that's where it is here. It's an inch deep, mile wide. We have a little bit of knowledge, but all across a lot of different things. Yes. 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 That's so, so us, Joey. That is yeah. actually us to a T because oh, yeah, I want to meet that professor now because I just think he just summed it up. I love that. Yeah, that's so like a, that's going to be like one of our It takes the pressure things. off, right? It takes the pressure yes. off. And you can always sit there and, and be, uh, and there is the other part. It was a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. I've heard that's, that a lot. 
and that's sort of like a derogatory thing sometimes people right. say right well that's how well, i was know. told it too it yeah it's sort of like yeah. well you don't know enough or you can't you can't yeah. master one but it's right. no just have an inch deep mile wide as far as your your knowledge goes and you know you'll do fine yeah so even in I, this I, field I, here it's the same thing yeah you know, a little bit I, about I, everything but then exactly latch on to those people that know more in, the, in that specific topic latch on to those people and well yeah the advice that i have there too is that there's a lot of snake oil vendors out there i'm just saying be careful you know there's some people who just jump in and they want to buy every single program they want to do everything you know just be careful do your research who Look you give up, your yeah. bandwidth to or your time because mm -hmm. this is where joey and i we you know our bandwidth is very narrow and between life situations and i don't give my time up freely because it costs money to do that and i am just telling you be careful who you trust to get the information from because mm -hmm. there are people who will tell you urban myths and we've witnessed it. We've actually experienced it at eBay meetups. We, we are, there's times where Joey and I will look at each other like, what? Like, did where did they, that, right? like, yeah. what? <laughs> did you wait? And then we have to really kind of bring it in because you don't want to make that person wrong because they heard it from somewhere, right? That's, they heard it off the internet or off mm -hmm. the YouTube and this was you this guy. You want to kind of find or, out and research it on your own. Yes. Then, so, you know. you know, Joey's right. Like just get your circle of elders of people who are going to hold you accountable. And that's going to be Joey and I for sure. Cause I'm a tough cookie and Joey's, he cracks the I whip. I tell like it is, you know? but I, you know, I got a little bit of humor there. Yeah. Yeah. We, well together we're kind of, we're kind of like, Humorless. The, her, well, what is the, the team of the, the, the I don't know the uh oh my gosh I just lost it like I was gonna well what if like uh the guy who did um uh, I don't know he was a doctor he was like oh my gosh see here we go this is a Robinism right here I know what I'm trying to say but I can't say it and then the show will end and I'll be like oh Joey I knew the name yeah sorry I'm running this down <laughs> Robinism anyway. hashtag Robinism okay, yeah. That. Oh my God. All right. So remember, the, remember your uh, takeaways from today for your final yes. exam notes. Uh, know your product, your bread and butter yes. for in your inventory. Uh, time in your schedule. Make sure you have scheduled time for to do your work. Keep it like yes. your normal job. Right. Have an accountability partner. Yes. Uh, don't necessarily quit your day job right away. <laughs> know your seller independence number, what that number would be to replace your current income. Yeah. Uh, talk about diversifying your, your inventory, but, Keep it small at first, similar to what you would do necessarily in like the marketplace. Uh, about 10% of things that you don't know compared to things you do know. Right. Um, hashtag what is your why? Yeah. We want to know. Below what your why is. We'll address Drop that a, next yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah. And have you ever had a Robinism yourself? <laughs> <Hashtag>. <laughs> I hope so, because that would be amazeballs. And special, well, you know, we'll make Robinism the code word of the day. Yay! Oh, Robinism nice, we'll nice, nice. All right. Hey, so, and then get the word out, you guys. We want to try to get to a thousand people, and if that happens, Joey and I will do something really cool. We haven't really thought about it. We haven't really swirled on it. We haven't got really some things about in the it. works. Got some but, things uh, in the works here, yeah. I definitely think there might be some coffee involved. But, I think there would definitely be some. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, get the word out in the community. You guys, Joey and I do a really good job of supporting other people yeah. in the community. We're all about it. Um, so we, just, we, you know, like I said earlier, we appreciate the feedback. We appreciate yeah. the and, and then just tag us, stuff. just tag us, just tag us on Instagram. You yep. could tag us with the Ecom 101 podcast, or you could do our personals too. And then we'll take them and we'll share them and we'll get your name out there too. And, yeah, we just really appreciate you guys. Yeah. And all of you who are following us, like, that is amazing to us. Like, we're super excited. We we were, like, nervous, like, Christmas Day, but, like, nervous, bad, too. Like, oh, my gosh. But then the love that we got was amazeballs. It was really, it was really good. It was really yeah. good. And so I want to do a special shout-out. Joey hasn't met him yet. Uh, I've met him at last email uh, open. Wade, I just want to say, Wade Ventures, thank you for supporting us and putting up the posts up on your IG, letting your viewers follow us and uh, constantly, constantly advertising for us. I think it's it's awesome. So Wade and I are going to do something special at eBay Open. Keep an eye out for that. If you guys yeah. don't follow Wade, do me a favor, go over there and follow him. He's a maze balls guy. He he really is a good family guy. Um, and you know, eventually maybe we'll have them on our show, Joey. Like, wow. 
I know. Yes. <laughs> I know. We're excited. But anyway, so all of you, all of you that have liked and said something and commented, oh my gosh, you guys, I right? Yeah, I'm speaking for awesome. both of us, Joey. It's been really good. It's been it really been great. It's yeah. been really fun. It's been really fun. So we're, we're going to be it's around, it. you guys. We're, yeah. Where is it? You know? So. All right. And with that, class is dismissed. Woohoo! <laughs> Till next time, guys. Yeah. Take care, you guys. And make sure Bye. you put the Y down below. Yes. All right. Ding, ding, bell. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a bell. <laughs> Dang it. Let me stop this, though.